Hi, I'm John Bay from TACOM HQ. We're going to talk a little bit today about our structure barrel and why, why it is what it is. First of all, we want to tell you that we are not building the barrels. We, we will take a barrel from Bartline, Broad, and Krieger, Packnor, your favorite. We want to work with your guys. The guys that you have faith in is the guys we're going to have faith in. We're not changing that basic design. We're not the experts. What we are want to do is take the idea of what makes a barrel and perform in a harmonic value and cooling. We use a two and two and a quarter being the largest diameters. We use a 1.75 and we use a 1.5. And as long as we meet those criteria, we're kind of on our way. Does it mean you're gonna get a two and a quarter inch barrel? No. This barrel started 2.06. It's 39 inches long. It weighs 16 pounds, one ounce in its, in its current state. And technically, we could make it lighter. What did you say? This barrel, we could take it down to the 14 pound range, or we collected about 19. And the reason we know that is we run a simple program that we can calculate this barrel's weight within a half a pound in its finished state. So we know its diameters, we know how much we're taking off in the grooves, we know the weight of this bore, of the bores passing down through here. We know the weight of the, the chamber area. We will ask you questions about what round are you shooting? And it's not to know what you're shooting because we want to spread information. You really have got a lid on it, haven't you? What's your secret? Mellow jazz, bongo drum? It's so we know where your round is, we know where the shoulder is, we know where the neck is, we know the length of your round because that's part of the calculation of the weight, but also how this section is formed, our shank chamber area, because this is strength. We want to make sure that we don't put cores where they're not supposed to be or reduce diameters where they're not supposed to be. Again, the reason we want to know about your cartridge is we will take that cartridge and determine its length of maximum pressure and we start building that barrel around that point, that mat, those maximum pressure points to keep safety within the barrel. These backside ports here are there to let the barrel breathe. Every time this barrel sees around and go goes go through it, there'll be a column of air shoved in front of the bullet, passes through this barrel, and for a brief moment, you have a strong venturi effect take place, creating a stream low pressure zone. Air will pass through the barrel, and then as the pressure wave forms on the bullet exiting, air will be passed back, back in the barrel. So the air is actually transferred, moved two times per firing round. Just like a radiator, if I take a, take a racing radiator and Nice piece of uh, aluminum radar, it might be weigh two and a half, three pounds. If I make it a solid piece of aluminum, it's not gonna cool. Even if I put, turn into a square and put a few fins into it, it's not gonna cool. Anybody who races high performance, the denser that pattern, the denser that radiator, on the fin count, the higher it's cooling. That's what we've done here. We have a high fin count to dissipate heat off all those tips. And in this barrel, weight for weight, if I have a solid barrel of the same weight, this barrel has approximately 410% more cooling surface. What? 410% is a big number. It's not 10 or 15. 10 or 15% numbers disappear in noise. In almost anything you do for shooting, just change the temperature outside, that disappears in noise. At 400 and some odd percent, that is a number that you will see every time you go and shoot. This is a 408. I would fully expect that I could run this 408 round for round next to a guy with a 308 standard heavy barrel and expect my barrel to run cooler on this 408 than he can on this 308. One of the things we just we recently did in Georgia, we took ambient temperatures around, around the gun, around the barrel, uh, using our measuring bricks and patio and wood, and the ambient temperature, soak temperature was 110. The barrel was 110. We put 16 rounds through the Norma, uh, well, within reason, as fast as we get back on the 40-yard target, and we, we made sure we shot a sub-MOA target at that, at that range. And the temperature on the barrel at, at its highest point had rose by 11 degrees. The chamber had risen by 5. You will find, actually, the chambers run cooler on these barrels than almost any point because the heat sink is where? It's in front of the chamber. It's always drawing heat out of the chamber. Always. It's going the other way. So you'll find also that your barrel life will go up. Your throat erosion will be down. Your firecracking will be down. And we are comparing that to other barrels being standard. And what does that, you know, uh, a lifetime uh, account? So we expect to see further improvements there also for anybody who steps up to this up to this game. Um, the lightest weight gun we've done so far, a barrel, would be a 300 wind mag we did on a, uh, a glass chassis. And 
Its weight with a 32 inch barrel was, is 11 pounds uh, with a stainless steel rail on it. Um, and that is an inch and a half barrel. Is it a featherweight mountain gun? No, not at all. Do I expect that gun to be able to hold, hold and continuous good groups at 1,000 yards? Yes, I do. Uh, so it's, it's, it's what's the market, what, what's, the, what's the goal uh, that, that the, the end user wants to work, to work with. What we will do further steps are actually break down harmonic resonance within the barrel to interrupt it. Harmonics can only, only work if it has a surface or material, a pathway that it can continue the harmonics. If you disrupt it by changing densities, by features, by shapes, well then you break up the harmonic wave. And there are barrels that we will produce that we work further to further break up that harmonic wave. The other thing that every shooter that works with us has shot the barrel, the first thing we'll note is that it's, that it's recoil pulse on them is different. The fact is, since the barrel isn't going into a strong sinusoidal event, that sinusoidal event doesn't just stop at the action, at that, at that interface. It's going to go somewhere. It goes to the chassis. It'll travel to your cheek. It'll travel to your shoulder. And, our, and by having that reduced harmonic take place, your change in your position on your cheek, how you feel in your cheek, what you feel in the shoulder, is less. We had one gentleman, Eduardo, who said that when I first shot the barrel, he was quiet. And I'm thinking, what went wrong? And it was a 375. And he's quiet, and he's quiet, and he finally says, and I said, Eduardo, what, is there something wrong? He said, this is the, that's the deadest 375 ever shot. It's just dead. And, that's, and we've had multiple people say that, and movement is less. Guess what stays on target better? The barrel. You stay on target better. Your head's not being bounced. Your shoulder's not being bounced as far. It's very much more a pushback versus a whipped back coming back into your position. And actually, we see that on the chassis, um, where we see wear marks. And uh, it's one of the things we look for. How is the system working? What are the wear points of the bedding and the chassis? I can look at it. You can tell it initially if it's moving. And if we reduce that, you know, the whole system becomes more predictable. This pattern here, yes, it's there for maximum strength as an explosive strength. You figure this outside large eye side diameter is acting as a cage as it wants to try and pull itself apart. But the other reason is there is the harmonic starts where? The harmonics does not start at the head of the case. The harmonic starts at the neck, at the junction of when that bullet first hits the rifling. That's the start of harmonics, frontwards, backwards, however you want to say it, sinus soil. But what we've done here is we've created a surface here that harmonics wants to start to run. Well, then it transitions a, a diameter. I can tell you right there, that's a disruptor. A little bit of background in that. Then I transfer into a spiral pattern, another disruptor. Oh, then we transfer it into a tube. Oh, it's another disruptor. And the spiral is interrupted, okay? It doesn't, it's not continuous. And actually, well, our falling angel pattern is just that, interrupted cuts specifically to break off, to help start reducing harmonic whip. And, and harmonics, is is complex and usually when you work with materials and harmonics about for every one thing you learn you learn that there's 10 ways not to do something because of failure points but harmonics is is how it travels through the center of the material through the, the main section but also how it moves along the outside edge and they are not all the same and for those out there a note as the barrel heats its harmonic node will change rapidly. Where a lot of times barrels are looked at as far as accuracy of three to five rounds, we're looking to show accuracy over 20 to 30 rounds, 40 rounds, where we're going to put five shot groups on a dot, five shots groups on a dot, five shot groups on a dot, and go, what's my drift? What's my, what's my, my group size? And isolate that because, let's face it back, there's an awful lot of sports out there where you shoot more than three or four rounds, five rounds or military guys are not gonna be limited to five rounds. Their engagement is blank period until it's done. And we wanna make sure that we're showing them something that will perform over an extended period, okay? And that's the reason we wanna look at that long-term test is we drive heat into it. Where's it going? What's it doing? Now, can we further improve that, okay? Everybody says a one-hole gun's a one-hole gun, and you're right, a one-hole gun's a one-hole gun. Can I make a one-hole gun at 30 rounds? That's my goal, that's, that's a goal, that's where we wanna be. And get to. Are we going to have failures? Yes. 
But every time we, we, we take a step forward, it, those groups get smaller, they drift. And that's why when we tell people that for us, if we shoot, um, if I shoot my, my 330 my Norma, that I will shoot 168 grain bullets, I'll shoot 180s, 190s, 230s. I expect within reason, when I say within reason, like quarter MOA reason, vertical stacks of those rounds because I, the harmonic value is so much less. Third party noted that it, it, they, were at, they had to shoot at 400 yards, a ladder test of seven different charges that go, where's the, where's the round going based on the harmonics? The, the goal is predictability under a variety of circumstances. Within reason, I think we pretty well covered what, we're, what we are trying to achieve here and what our goals are, okay? Is the, is the barrel for everybody? No. It isn't. Uh, Porsches and high-end Corvettes or Lamborghinis aren't for everybody either. But what we are looking to hear is change the concept of what can make an accurate barrel. And it's not just what's in the center. We think we can help you do make it more accurate by the work that goes around that board. And that's why we're happy to work with them. all the barrel people out there because they're the experts on that. And uh, we're happy to follow that suit. But with, with that, I'm John Baker from TACM HQ, and thank, thank you for watching us.